All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Communication Matters panel discussion from the BAPC program at Royal Roads University. We're here in the Center for Dialogue at the Learning and Innovation Center. And with me are Samir Karim, who... <laughs> okay. With me is Samir Karim, who is an experienced journalism with, journalist with television and radio news and a sports background. Uh, he's worked for the Astral Radio News team and was nominated for a British Columbia Association of Broadcasters Award for his coverage of the Haida Gwaii earthquake in 2012. He has a diploma in, in the technology of broadcast journalism and communications from BCIT, currently in the uh, on-campus BAPC. Jess Kirkwood is joining the panel as a well-informed human conflict dynamics specialist. And she's a graduate of Langara College, where she earned distinction in two Associate of Arts degrees in political science and peace and conflict studies. She's also in the BAPC in the online blended program. And finally, we have Vanessa Oishi, who is coming to us from a background in advertising, mostly with Procter & Gamble. She has an advanced diploma in advertising from Durham College and was the highest ranking student with President's Honors and Leadership. We have and she's Vanessa also Oishi, in the blended who is And we're very pleased to have you all with us today. Thank you. Thanks. So we're going to be discussing communications issues relating to the recent developments with the Kinder Morgan pipeline expansion in Burnaby, and particularly under Burnaby Mountain, and the public reaction to those plans. So I thought perhaps we could start with a brief video from Kinder Morgan, uh, just as a, an article to discuss in terms of how their public relations strategy played out. Maybe we can see that now. Breeding safely due to the people at Kinder Morgan. Everybody in our office, they enjoy boating, fishing, you know, hiking, and spending time with their families outside. I'm Raj Lally. I don't just work in the community, I live here too. All right, good stuff. Well, as you can see, Kinder Morgan spent quite a lot of time attempting to influence public opinion and there was quite a lot of debate around this event when it happened. I wondered maybe we could start with you, Zamir. Yes. Um, what do you think news coverage of Kinder Morgan's survey work and subsequent protest, do you think it garnered the appropriate news coverage for the events that occurred? Well, it seems like what uh, Kinder Morgan tried to do was it tried to uh, be a little sneaky with it. Uh, and they were attempting to do this survey work with uh, on, some, on a type of... Uh, work, pipeline work, like uh, we've seen in British Columbia in the past, which is very contentious. And even by them just doing the survey work, it, it garnered quite a, uh, quite a stiff response from opponents of that. Uh, maybe they would have been better off trying to uh, be a little bit more conciliatory or consult uh, the public ahead of time before beginning uh, work like this. Um, for example, I would use uh, some of the northern uh, natural gas pipelines that, that uh, Various companies are working on at this time up uh, Petronas as uh, and uh, Spectra Energy. They're building a pipeline uh, along from northern BC to the uh, north coast to Prince mm -hmm. Rupert and to Kitimat, as well as uh, Trans Canada. Actually, Trans Canada is working with uh, Petronas out of um, Malaysia, as and uh, British Gas BG Group is working with. Uh, uh, Spectra Energy, and they're uh, going also from northern BC to uh, Prince Rupert. And they uh, set up a series of uh, public consultation services like years in advance. There was this uh, started begin it started in 2012 where they began started doing their consultation. And that's something that uh, Kinder Morgan did not attempt to do in this case. And that's something that maybe had that they been able to talk to the local people they may have seen the reservations that they had and maybe been able to uh, 
overcome them and get people on their sides. Mm. Good point. Do you guys have anything to add about the news coverage specifically? Um, I just think it's really important that if they had of, you know, gone ahead and done some research and talked to more people, that they may have been able to prevent a lot of the events that happened and were all over the news and just had such a big uprising in a lot of places. Yeah, I would say that it was very clear um, that Kinder Morgan had not done their research on the community that they were trying to work in. And I think that had they done that, they could have strategized more effectively, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, that being said, uh, the, the coverage was essentially appropriate for what it was. Um, the, pe the, the people of Burnaby and, and, and other people were not satisfied with uh, the type of uh, work that Kinder Morgan was, was doing, even if it, it, if it was just survey work and, and getting soil samples at this point. The idea behind uh, the potential of another pipeline going through was enough for uh, the local people to, uh, to, to, to uh, rise against. You also have to remember, though, that they were doing that survey work in a conservation area. So it wasn't just that they were conducting the survey work to, you know, strengthen their proposal. They were actually in a conservation area. So that's why people maybe were, you know, not so happy with that taking place. Mm -hmm. That conservation area is also over top of where the pipeline currently runs, which runs from Edmonton or north of Edmonton to uh, the BC coast and runs through Burnaby Mountain Park and through... Uh, uh, through that area as well, and so that's something that uh, I think, yeah, Kinder Morgan could have could have uh, definitely gotten more people on their side when they when they went through this uh, through this plan to uh, start serving the land. Mm. So foresight would have been a yes. much better. Yeah. Idea. <laughs> All right, I think that's probably indisputable given the way things played out. <laughs> I I wondered if you all wanted to say a little something about the main story and what came out of this. It seemed like it was very much focused on public reaction and the, the company seemed to be playing catch up for quite a lot of the, the news coverage. I wondered if you had anything to, to add to that kind of an idea about what resulted from Kinder Morgan's actions and whether that could have been differently if the company or the protesters had done anything differently? Um, well, I think the company has a bit of disconnect being in Texas and not actually being in BC. I mean, when you look at the people that live in BC, um, they're a different type of people, you know? They care about their environment. That's like one of their number one things they care about. So I think um, when the pipeline company, Kinder Morgan, was looking at things, they were only looking at it from a financial standpoint. I mean, it does make sense to expand a pipeline where there already is a pipeline. It does, but really they're not thinking about the environmental impact and just the impact it has on BC itself. Hmm. Good. Jess, thoughts? Could you repeat the question? <laughs> I certainly like, could, I, yeah. I got so caught up in what Vanessa was saying <laughs> that I, I kind of lost base with the original question. Do you think this could have worked differently if either Kinder Morgan or the protesters had taken a different tack in the way they approached media coverage? Yeah, I think um, in terms of Kinder Morgan's approach, I think that had they been more proactive, like, like we've all been saying, it, it definitely would have changed things. Um, they definitely seemed to come to the table kind of late in the game after the protests were all taking place, almost like they assumed that the government or the police would kind of get a handle on it and deal with it for them. Um, Public relations is very important, obviously, especially for a company like that. And after reading a couple of articles, you know, where the president of the company made some not so reputable comments, um, I think that they definitely could have taken it more seriously. I, well, and to second that, uh, as Vanessa and Jesser have mentioned, that BC is a very different province than. Uh, than, uh, say, for example, Texas or Alberta. Uh, and you, you bring parallels between this Kinder Morgan uh, pipeline pr uh, proposal as well as the, uh, the Enbridge pipeline proposal that, that uh, they've proposed to go t towards Kitimat from, uh, from Alberta as well. Now, uh, if, if people can remember back in 2012, and you were uh, mentioning about the, the coverage of the uh, 2012 Haida Gwaii earthquake, a lot of concerns mm -hmm. Uh, came out of that earthquake uh, about that uh, Enbridge proposal. 
as to how safe is it uh, to put an oil pipeline that's carrying that much uh, oil through an area that has potential to be uh, 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 geologically vo uh, volatile. Mm -hmm. And so people in BC really are, are concerned about that, but uh, it, it, it is one of those things that uh, they just had to maybe think about the, the people that they were interacting with uh, first, and that seems like it would have uh, uh, maybe not stopped all the problems, but had mitigated some of the concerns that they, that they ended up facing. Hmm. I think it's just really important to know your audience. I mean, really, <laughs> when they brought up this whole proposal, I mean, they should have known, if they had done their research, what kind of audience they were trying to propose it to. And in that fact, they should have known that there was going to be this uprising. Hmm. Just to go back to what you were saying a moment ago, um, it was really clear from all of the news that was online that Kinder Morgan did not want to disclose that information about safety. Mm -hmm. They were asked repeatedly, and unfortunately, the National Energy Board, the NEB, didn't you know, kind of uh, force them into disclosing more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it might have been better for their own public reputation in the yeah. long run. Well, True. one thing that, as we are communications professionals, and uh, something that since uh, this uh, issue has has come to the forefront since October, I believe, uh, Kinder Morgan has sent out uh, postings for various communications professionals to try and in in their Vancouver office to try and uh, uh, bolster their. Uh, their plan or their their ranks to be able to, to, to deal with issues like this in the future. Hmm. That actually leads nicely into our next question. I think. <laughs> I wondered if we could have a a bit of a discussion about the advertisement that we saw earlier, and maybe you could uh, you could speak a little bit to how you think Kinder Morgan attempted to sway public opinion, uh, particularly with people who were say uncommitted at the time. Was that was there a attack they took in trying to get people on their side? I definitely think there was. Um, when you look at the advertisement that we watched, um, Kinder Morgan is trying to pull at the, you know, the emotions of the people. And you know, for someone who's not really sure what side they're on, at first they may see the pipeline as just you know, negative. But what they were trying to do was humanize it all. So they were trying to say, you know, we're the, we're the people I'm a person that cares. I'm someone who loves the environment, but I'm also someone who works to protect and take care of the pipeline. And it's just this whole thing about, you know, I live there. I live along the area where the pipeline goes, and I'm willing to also work for them because, you know, it's not such a bad thing. We take care of it, all this stuff. And, you know, when you look at it that way, it is a little easier to see it from that point of view. But I, obviously, if you're strongly leftist, you're typically not going to be swayed, but I definitely think they tried their best to sway the, the middlemen, per se. Yeah. I think one thing about that is that really what we saw as consumers of media initially was the protest, and only later came these commercials uh, from Kinder Morgan, and it definitely was you know, trying to regain public opinion as well as sway that, that large majority in the middle that's not really sure where mm -hmm. they stand. And it's true, a lot of people in BC are environmentalists. They do care and prioritize the environment. But at the same time, you know, e even people who are far on the left are concerned with uh, our economic condition. Mm -hmm. They're just unsure of you know, how to deal with that. And so the commercials kind of resolve that for some people, not all, <laughs> for some people by saying, yes, I'm a person who lives in the community, lives here in BC, and is also concerned with the environment. And yet, you know, I recognize the necessity of this pipeline, and so I'm going to be one of the people at the table who's deciding this is how well we need to take care of this and make sure that we prevent anything bad from happening. Well, uh, Jeff, um, I, I refer back to your rhetoric course that we took back in uh, <laughs> back in our, our first term in this program, and uh, ethos, logos, and pathos. And this s speaks to, uh, to ethos to me as well as uh, 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 pathos. His, his emotion is coming through as a father, as, as someone who lives on the land, who, or, or off the land, and brings his ch child to that area and to, to the rivers and all that. And his ethos as a worker who has also lived in that area and also uh, ha has safely taken care of that pipeline for however long he's been around. 
I, Excellent. I think it's really important too that he seems proud to represent the pipeline and in, at least in the advertisement it makes you feel like you know maybe I could support the pipeline as well even though a lot of the times you're not so sure it's just seeing someone so powerful and backing it up makes you think maybe I could hmm. good all right I wonder if we could switch positions for a moment here just as we as we come towards the end of this conversation what do you think happened with the opposition to the pipeline how did they use the the escalation of the social situation and what do you think they did poorly or effectively to get their point across well i definitely think it's really important to look at the finances of things i mean when you look at kinder morgan they have a large budget to be able to make amazing advertisements that may be very effective whereas on the opposition they don't necessarily have the finances to do a big commercial or something like that. So they're using signage and bold messages, like saying like, Kinder Morgan says that oil spills create more jobs. Just things like that. It's, they're saying, you know, people are just trying to show that there's you know, a hidden meaning behind this whole idea. And I think the only way they can do it is through signage and protesting and just the protest in general. I mean, it does create something to look at, you know, it's just, what are they doing over there? What do their signs say? Well, you know, Kinder Morgan doesn't believe in justice, all these things. It's just crazy how they have to pull it together. Mm -hmm. And I think they do it in an effective way. It can be a little bit intrusive, but it works, I guess. Good. I think that, sorry. <laughs> I think that actually you, you pointed out something um, very important. And that is that the people who are up there on the mountain don't have a lot of resources, and so they need to be using their voice. And one of the most powerful things that they can say with that voice is exactly what Kinder Morgan has said, and just kind of bringing the attention back to, you know, so for example, if it was that having an oil spill creates more jobs, they don't need to say much more than that. As long as people are watching the news and watching the media, they understand what that message means, you know, just by reading the sign. Kinder Morgan thinks that an oil spill creates more jobs? That's absurd. Does that mean that they don't really care about the safety of the pipeline? You know, like it, it creates that reaction in you. So, you know, thankfully the media is there to record it, but mm -hmm. those kind of statements that are selected are, are very powerful. It seemed like, uh, it seemed like not only, I think you guys are, are rightly pointing out the attention that was, was refocused quite effectively onto the corporate communications itself. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there was, I think, quite a lot of media coverage of what might be called activist momentum, right? Mm -hmm. So these increasingly shocking images of arrests, of children being arrested, of university professors being arrested. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and how that played on the news really yeah. dominated the the cycle of, of coverage for this event. So you had a, an interesting kind of duality in that, in that regard. Speaking of which, do you have any suggestions, either for the protesters and how they ran their opposition campaign, or how, in hindsight, Kinder Morgan could have done a better job? I, I think that earlier you were pointing out that other companies have gone into the local communities years in advance and really um, you know, attempted to gain public consent. Uh, and I think that that's very important. I think that you know, First Nations consultation is there for a reason. It's a law in Canada. You need to go in and you need to go in early. That's a best practice. You need to be there early, have everyone understand the project, you know, uh, have experts talk about how that's going to impact their community. And have in, you know what? And it's a benefit to have First Nations leaders from the community um, surrounding be there for environmental assessment processes because they're going to have, you know, kind of a, a vision into what the land needs and and how it's going to affect the community differently than the company from Texas is going to have, you know. And unfortunately, you're right. For some reason, First Nations consultation was overlooked, and it almost seemed like. They really wanted to speed up the process and just push it through, um, which seemed almost facilitated by the NEB, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so my suggestion personally would be you should be in the community early 
you should be you know, giving presentations about what you're going to be doing in that community and getting the feedback. Because citizens, you know, if there is a problem and you're transparent about it, citizens have a lot of great ideas that can contribute to those processes. And if you involve people, they're much more likely to be on board. Well, yeah, consul consultation, uh, that seems to be the key from, from my experiences. Get people involved early, get them, get them uh, if you get them involved early and get them on your side, they're the ones that are going to advocate for you in the long term. And Very that's true. what Kinder Morgan did not do. And that's what these, these oil pipelines up north, uh, or these uh, natural gas pipelines up north have the potential to, to do, is they've already got the, uh, they're already on side of the Port Authority and Prince Rupert. They're already on side with the uh, various business uh, associations up there. So they have the pe a lot of the influencers on board and then they, those people can talk to their friends and so on and so forth. We and can continue to grow a network that is full of, uh, of powerful people that are advocating on, on behalf of your project. Hmm. It sounds like we're talking to some extent about an intercultural communication problem. Yes. Very Whether true. that's between the cultures of First Nations communities and the, the pipeline executives, or the cultures of different types of, of urban communities, or the cultures between Canada and the US. Very I true. wonder if, if some means of facilitation in, in that regard would have been necessary as well. Well, I think, again, going back to uh, the point that we made earlier, if Kinder Morgan had done some cultural research, because the reality is that none of us know about all of the cultures in the world. <laughs> it <laughs> takes learning. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you walk up to someone at an airport and go to shake their hand and it offends them. And you don't know that, and no one is going to blame you for that. But you need to really do your research and know where you're walking into, especially if you're the one proposing the project. I would have to put the onus on them. Um, you need to do your homework. I think um, one thing too you have to look at from like an advertising standpoint, um, Kinder Morgan, all their advertising was more of a reaction. And in advertising, the really important thing to do is to be the beginning of it. You don't want to react to it. You want to be the initial start to it. Mm. So I think that if, you know, on either side, if there was more, um, I guess, making themselves known before and ahead of time, there'd be less idea of having to try to change someone's mind because maybe you would have made their mind up for them, you know? Because it is harder to change someone's opinion once it's already formed. Very true. Hmm. That's a good thought. I think perhaps we should leave it there. Uh, I'd like to thank all our panelists again. Samir, Jessica, Vanessa, thank you all for coming and for engaging in such a lively discussion. Uh, is there any discussion or contributions from the audience? I'm All right. I'm just curious about, like, every time you identify protesters, you identify them as being left and uh, in the political spectrum. And in a lot of the literature that I'm reading right now, I mean, Ralph Nader just wrote an article in uh, Forbes magazine talking about how the corporatization of both the left and the right has created a, a, a false polemic. And mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Green Party is generally fiscally conservative, but environmentally, you know, left. I'm just wondering how, if, there's, if this notion of left and right is becoming a, a red herring in, uh, in the discussion about this, uh, about this issue. I think, yeah, I, I think you're right. And if you take a look at uh, a lot of funding for, for protesters, whether it be in Canada or the United States, and, and things especially like the, the Keystone XL pipeline, a lot of opposition uh, to that pipeline has been funded uh, through, I think, uh, through right-wing organizations funding left, like sort of leftist uh, protesting protest groups, and it's essentially colluded the two together, and and, and it's kind of confused where the actual opposition is coming from. Is it coming from business interests in the U.S. or is it coming from uh, Canadians who are actually opposed to the pipeline, to that to that pipeline? That's a very good point, and I have to say that. Um, you know, your point is very good. I, I think that, um, <laughs> sorry, kind of lost my way there. Oh, sorry. Um, I think that when you put people into positions, they really grind their feet into the ground and they stick with that. And as Vanessa pointed out a minute ago, once you are aligned with a position or a side, it's very hard to change that. You know, so I think that it would be a good idea for all of us to kind of reassess what we're about and what we care about and, and try to stay away from, 
you know, if I believe in this, I therefore believe in that and that and that. You know, it kind of separates you. It separates people. I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it touched on all the points. I think that dichotomous kind of constellation of issues that are not necessarily related to each other is one of the one of the large social issues in politics that mm -hmm. seems to never quite be gotten to, onto the agenda. Well said. All right, I think maybe we should wrap it up then. Uh, thank you all for Thank you for having engaging us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank and you. thank you all for coming. And thank you as well. And we hope you'll join us again for the next Communication Matters panel. Thanks, everybody.